for years we had only a couple of Empires games. For years, most were not good. We technically only had two good Empires games, both of which were Dynasty Warriors, as Samurai Warriors only had one Empires game, and that was Samurai Warriors 2 Empires in the West, which wasn't that great, and was lacking in comparison to Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires. So back in 2015, when they announced Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, I was excited. I had no love for DW8 itself, but the Empires games were my jam. I just had to get it, and I did. This was during my college year, one year. I dropped out after failing my first year online. That's a story for another day though. Instead, after nearing 10 years of it being out and me owning it, it's time to finally review Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires for the PC. The officer edit mode has been expanded with new options like colors, outfits, accessories, and more. The creation tools are just more in depth than ever before and were dropped in later Empire's games. This is the one thing that DWAE does better than any other game, including DW70. We could finally make more realistic looking people, including real world people and game characters. I had no problems making some YouTubers and Final Fantasy VII characters. Of course, being Japanese, the game does favor female officers with more options in hair and outfits. But the weapons are not gender locked this time around, so that's good. Let men run around like Dao Chan and women like Lu Bu. How else are we going to get tall, muscular Dami mommies? For the first time, and only time ever, we can now make our own banners. Well, kind of. There's a strict limit of a single letter on the banner, or a symbol, or a custom image if you have one that can fit the resolution requirements and has been edited in an image editor like paint.net to have transparency and whatnot to fit the banner. The colors barely matter, as nothing really pops as they're very faded. Some look awful, while others are just passable, like the red doesn't look really red, the green doesn't look really green, so on and so forth. I honestly don't like this mode, and I'm glad it's gone in later games. Plus, the original images would appear on anything with it, meaning you can't have troops with no icon on them or an image or a letter then. So I never use original images to avoid that issue. You can also now make your own mounts like banners. They're very basic in, in options. You can only pick normal horses and with DLC more fantasy like ones like medieval armored horses or unicorns. Once you select the model you can change the fur color then the size of various body parts so you can make the horse have a very long neck and stubby legs or a very long tail and a very short body so make a giant demon horse or make a stubby unicorn made for dwarves high on meth the choice is yours honestly I just make random stuff out of boredom really another new addition is troop edit now your kingdom can have unique troops in it to fully customize your faction to be more unique problem is there's not much variety and there's clones of models with only a small variation like the symbol or letter or original image being placed on a different spot. You can only choose a basic model, change the body size and outfit color, that's it. Very basic and last lackluster. Kinda like the game itself. Again it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. 
Kingdom edit from Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires returns with the addition of being able to change who's in it after finalizing the kingdom unlike DW7E. Now you can also increase the number of officers in the kingdom, the banner, the troop, and the horse that represents your kingdom. So you can now have an entire faction of unique people, like a dwarven kingdom with dwarven troops and horses, elven kingdom, demons, orcs, avalanche from Final Fantasy 7, you name it. Overall not a bad change, it's just what worked before with fixes and new additions. Of course the number of kingdoms like banners is small so be careful not to create too many because only a select amount can appear in each playthrough and be saved at once. The last new addition to the game that never made a comeback after this was scenario edit mode where you can now make your own scenarios having total control who appears and doesn't as well as using base scenarios to build off of. Now you'll place entire kingdoms or officers in different territories, add free officers, vagabonds, and determine the overall strength of the kingdoms. You can name the scenario, add a description, and block unique or custom or even generic officers from appearing. さあ、you have the usual scenarios in the game with the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Anti Duon, Juo Alliance, Battle at Guandu, Battle at Cherby, The Gathering of Heroes, etc. But this time around, you don't need to play them to unlock anything as there's nothing to unlock. All officers are playable at the start. Thank god for that. I'm looking at you Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires. Also, you can play your created scenarios here if you have any, or downloaded some, as well as check out your DLC scenarios. I usually just always stick to my own creations anyways. The politics are downgraded into a more streamlined fashion. You just get alliance, battle, buy something, save, recruit, and interact with officer basically now. There's no interacting with your people either. The capital area was removed in favor of text boxes and menus. How stupid and lazy. There's no hiring unique troops, various forms of alliances, etc. anymore. I hate the political phase really. It drags on because every turn your officers have to bow to you. So this adds more time before you can play. The month shows, they bow, then they bow again, and the UI shows, select something. Only one thing too, as they didn't bring back the multiple actions per turn from Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires. How stupid. And then after you select the one thing, they bow again. Ugh. これからは我が知略。義兄弟のために使おう。こう見えても情に熱いんだ。
あんたを見捨てる真似はしないぜ Cutscenes were downgraded from the more meaningful, character driven, and growth of Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires. And there's also less of them. Back to the old Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires and 5 Empires, lackluster, anticlimactic, and boring and pointless feels like AI wrote it cutscenes instead. Yeah, that bad. None of them are great and feel very random. Barely any of them have anything memorable about them. In fact, I just skip them every time they appear after playing this game for years. They're that bad. You just want to get back to playing the game. Hey, Miroyo! That's what Rei is. Ah, the Shinigami of the Senjou is the one. It's a big deal. If you're not the leader, you can participate in quests. These are basic and forgettable and only serve as time wasters and ways to get resources and hopefully favor with other officers or sworn siblings, marriage, and promotions. These range from killing a certain number of wolves, to kill a certain number of bandits, and a final boss of which is a random officer. The AI in this game is a total pushover, so the quests are short and boring. The most time consuming part is just running around the empty map, which is just the battlefield itself. There's no unique levels for the quests. What an awful and lazy game design choice. But to be expected from Tecmo Koi, or Koi Tecmo, or whatever they call themselves these days. They've been changing their names so much over the years. Honestly, you won't be enjoying these for long. But these are needed for cutscenes and unlocking new way of life titles. What are you The stratagems were downgraded into basic attacks like explosions, ice strike, arrow tower, fire strike, thunder strike, spawn ally near you, teleport back to the main camp and heal yourself and other allies. That's basically all that's left. The cinematics from Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires were moved. Instead of just giving us the option to disable the cinematics in the settings, you just don't get any. And that takes away the effect the stratagems had on the battles as they added to the immersion, the emotion, the excitement, and despair of combat. Your enemies could use them just as you could. They could summon juggernauts, burn down your camps, summon a horde of reinforcements, you name it. But here it's just more basic stuff with no meaningful impact. Heck, probably the most impactful thing now is you can change the weather. If you have the right stratagem, you can change the weather from sunny to cloudy to rainy to thunderstorm. In fact, that's the only way you can have weather in the game, is if you use a stratagem. That's fucking stupid. And the weather does not affect anything in the game. It doesn't affect morale, doesn't affect movement, it doesn't do anything. What the hell is the point?
お見事あなたに任せたのは正解でしたねコンベイズトフダンシティ・ウォーリー・セブン。そのコンベイズベッター。But that's the only thing that Dynasty Warriors 8 ever improved upon while letting everything else be worse in every way. You now have several Musuo attacks, and the jump strong attack is back. The bow is still missing, thank god. The horse combat is improved even more, so that, so, more so than before. But yeah, overall, it's just a little more in depth. Smoother than Dynasty War 7 combat system. Nothing bad, but nothing grand. Zako Bakari to Mot Taitag. Omae wa chigat te ita yo da. 私は1階の章まだまだ研さが足りません Now to talk about the reasons this game sucks Stratagems were downgraded with no cutscenes and being more basic Now you just spawn an explosion or change the weather, that's it No more be meaningful battle changing strategies No more unique units either You can't summon juggernauts Or have Namen troops or tigers or wolves or anything The next downgrade is the cinematics. Where are they? Alright, nowhere. They removed everything, created new ones, and then made them so awful that you'd be not blamed for thinking you were playing Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires. There's no effort, there's no meaningful moments, there's no bonding between officers either. The graphics are atrocious as well. Why is it just rock, mud, and dirt? Dynasty Warriors 7 looks so much better than this crap. There's no old school levels remade either. There's no memorable battlefields as they're all the same generic mud, dirt, and rock design. Another thing is there's no more seasons or weather. Unless you have a stratagem, what does that do? Nothing. It's purely cosmetic. Lame. You can only do one action per turn. Meaning 12 actions per year, with constant battles in between, making Empire mode boring and repetitive as hell. There's no more capital exploration either from DW7E. You can only navigate boring 2D menus. Your spouse is also insignificant. They will no longer appear next to you in the throne room like in DW7E. They also have no interactions with each other either. The child you can have is a joke, as they look nothing like you or your spouse. Plus, they're just a generic, randomly generated edit officer. This also means once the playthrough is over, you can save them or delete them forever. If you save them, they're no longer your child. This means in a new playthrough, they can lust after you. Yeah. Ancient China was ye old Alabama before Alabama. The PC port was lazy as to be expected from Tech McCoy. It's the PS3 version instead of the PS4, so the graphics are worse. The game is not native 1080p, but instead stretched out 720p, which looks awful. There's tons of graphical glitches, pop in bad load times, rendering issues, and lack of things on screen. The next problem is there's no button input display. Instead, you get keyboard prompts. So, good luck figuring out what is what, especially for the gamepad you use. Because you're going to want to use a gamepad with a Warriors game. You cannot remap a lot of stuff. For example, one thing that is hard coded and a major issue is the accept and cancel buttons. This means when you press A slash X, you will cancel, and B slash circle. Is accept. What is this, Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation 1? This is awful. The game is prone to crashing and overall is a very, very fragile thing. Honestly, I feel like I'm playing a Bethesda game.
よくも集めたもんだ莫大な財宝じゃ夢が膨らむのはい。